This is principlesofaccounting.com, chapter 10, and in this module we will look at the double declining balance method of depreciation as well as changes in estimates. And so the double declining balance method is one of several accelerated depreciation methods. It results in larger amounts of depreciation in earlier years and lesser amounts in later years of assets, uh, asset life. Uh, it's justified if the quality of service uh, produced by an asset declines over time or if repair and maintenance costs are expected to rise over time. Uh, both of those are explanations or reasons or justifications for accelerated methods, although indeed no particular justification is needed. It's one of several acceptable depreciation methods. Uh, with double declining balance, uh, we're going to take 200% of the straight line rate and multiply that times the remaining book value of the asset at the end of each period to determine depreciation for a particular period. So let's look at an example. This is the same asset we looked at in a previous module with straight line. It has a $100,000 cost, a $10,000 salvage value, and a four-year useful life. So double declining balance would look like this. First of all, recognize that with a four-year service life, the straight line rate is 25% per year. So twice the straight line rate or the double declining balance is 50%. Uh, so we're going to take the initial asset cost of 100,000 times 50% to get the first year's depreciation expense of 50,000. That will cause a reduction in the book value to 50,000. That is cost of 100,000 minus $50,000 of accumulated depreciation gives us a remaining book value or balance of 50,000 times twice the straight line rate to get year two's depreciation of 25,000. Each year it'll be reduced correspondingly. The last year can become a bit problematic. Uh, we would have a remaining $12,500 of net book value going into that year and 50% times that would be you know, well in excess of $2,500, but for some reason I'm only showing $2,500 as depreciation expense. And the reason is we've ignored salvage value to this point in the calculations. We're going to only take salvage value into account when we depreciate down to or through the depreciable base. We had a $90,000 depreciable base. We hit that in the last year and we simply cut off at that point and don't record any more depreciation expense. So let's review that concept. Salvage value is initially ignored with double declining balance. But once accumulated depreciation reaches the amount of the depreciable base, depreciation ceases. For year four, the calculated amount of depreciation would be 6250. That is 100,000 cost minus the previous accumulated depreciation times 50% would give us 6250. But that would cause total accumulated depreciation to exceed the 90,000 depreciable base. So we'll only book 2,500 of depreciation expense in the last year. If the asset has no salvage value, the double declining balance would never fully depreciate the asset. Usually a company will change to straight line near the end of the useful life of an asset simply to finish off the accounting for the full cost of the asset if there is no salvage value. There are uh, spreadsheet robots for this. Uh, here's an example where we have the formula DDB, $100,000 cost, $10,000 salvage value, four-year life, and then the final variable is indicating that we're in year three of, this, of the life the depreciation return would be $12,500. Again, here's a, a pop-up box where one could fill in the variables and it would return a formula result of $12,500 in this case. So these spreadsheet tools are very useful even for depreciation calculations. Let's consider fractional period depreciation with double declining balance. Uh, the first partial year will be a fraction of the annual amount. All subsequent years will be based on the normal calculation. In this case, we've got our $100,000 asset times twice the straight line rate, or 50%, but we only use the asset for nine months, or nine twelfths of a year. And so we return 37,500 of depreciation for the year, and that takes us into the next year with a book value of 100,000 cost minus 37,500 of accumulated depreciation. We start the year with 62,500 net book value times twice the straight line rate, or 50%, would give us $31,200. $150 as depreciation expense. Once again, uh, as we near the end of the useful life here, we can see that we'll simply stop depreciating when accumulated depreciation reaches the $90,000 depreciable base. There are alternatives to DDB, the 150% declining balance method, the 125% declining balance method, identical methodologies to what we've just looked at, except that rather than using twice the straight line rate, we'll use one and a half or one and a quarter times the straight line rate. Finally, let's think about changes in estimates for depreciation. 
assumptions about useful life and depreciable base are merely estimates. Uh, new information may periodically suggest revisions of estimates. A change in estimate does not require restatements of prior periods financial statements. These changes are handled prospectively over future accounting periods. So by way of example, let's assume our $100,000 four-year lived asset with $10,000 salvage value has been depreciated for two years. At the beginning of the third year, new information suggests the asset will have a total life of seven years and a $5,000 salvage value. The revised remaining depreciable base should be spread over the revised remaining useful life. And so here's the calculations. The first year we took 22,500, the next year we took 22,500, but in year three we're changing our estimates. We're changing from a four-year life to a five-year life, and we're changing from a $10,000 salvage value to a $5,000 salvage value. The depreciation already taken is 45,000, so our cost of 100,000 minus the depreciation already taken leaves us 55,000 of remaining cost, 5,000 of which will be recovered through salvage value. And so our calculation, the 100,000 cost minus depreciation already taken minus remaining salvage value is spread over the remaining life of five years. And we'll get $100,000 for year three and boosting our accumulated depreciation to 55,000. And so it will go for each subsequent year. In closing this module, I would like to point out issues about asset revaluation. Uh, international financial reporting standards actually include provisions that permit companies to revalue items of property, plant, and equipment to fair value at each reporting date. Uh, when applied, all assets in the same class are to be revalued annually. Uh, these adjustments to valuation are offset with changes in capital accounts, but they also result in continuous alterations of depreciation amounts. So depreciation can become far more complex under the international reporting system that allows for or permits revaluation of assets.